necessary unto God. And the Bible says, if you sin willfully, once you have been revealed or have the truth revealed to you, then you are obligated to hold steadfast to that truth that has been revealed to you. All right? Now take note in the book of Romans, the 10th chapter. A lot of people will tell you, I'm doing this because I love Jesus. But again, we have to strive lawfully. Look what Paul says to the Roman church in uh, chapter 10 from verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record, they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. In other words, what is he saying here? They want God, but they don't know how to find God. They, they, they want to preach and want to teach, but they don't know what they're preaching or teaching about. They have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Unless you are taught in the ways of godliness, there's no way that you can be a servant of God. So it is passed down from generation to generation. Each person must in turn pass the truth on to the next person or from church generation to church generation that the truth of God, amen, does not in any wise be uh, voided out. The whole Christian church is placed on a foundation of the word. And if you start compromising the word, you weaken the foundation. But God's true church is not a weak foundation. It's a church that's going to stand and the gates of hell shall not prevail against God's church. Amen. All right. So we see here, they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Now look at verse 3. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, in other words, they don't know God's way, going about to establish their own righteousness. Or in other words, I'll do it my way. I'm going to have this Christmas, and I'm going to have it in the name of Jesus. I'm going to get me one of these statues of baby Jesus. Though they don't know, they don't know what Jesus looked like. They're going to get a, 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 a statue carved of baby Jesus, and they're going to get some sheep around and, and three wise men. You can't find three wise men nowhere in the Bible. And you can find wise men that came. And that's Bible. But you can't find no three wise men that came. I don't know how many wise men that came. Amen. Praise God. So I'm saying that, and they called it the nativity scene. Hallelujah. And burn candles and lights and, and, and get crosses and burn them too. And all of this. Amen. That there is the only Bible record we have. We do have a record of the birth of Christ. Nothing wrong with, uh, praise the Lord, celebrating the birth of Christ. When? Every day. Every day you wake up, thank you, Jesus, for being Jesus. Every Sunday, every day you feel like celebrating Jesus. But show me anywhere in the Bible where the apostles celebrated a birthday for Jesus. Now, y'all find that, y'all show it to me. You can start looking right now. Amen. Praise the Lord. December 25th was the midwinter saltice or midwinter festival for Tammuz celebrated 2,000 years before Moses. I want you all to go to the library and look up under the Encyclopedia Americana. Encyclopedia Americana. And look up the origin of Christmas and you will find midwinter origination, midwinter salties celebrated December the 25th. Jesus was born 2,000 years before Moses? No, sir. Jesus wasn't even born in December. The Bible says the shepherds were what? Tending their flock. Not in December. See, if you do your research in that time of the year, and in that part of the country, the flock was all corralled for the midwinter. So Jesus, amen, by the flocks being out on the mountainside, it must not have been in December the 25th, which is midwinter. Now, whatever day he was born, as long as he was born, that's fine with me. But since the apostles did not tell us to worship any type of festival for Jesus, then we can't worship no festival for Jesus. And what I'm trying to show you here in the scripture, you can't create a festival for Jesus because it's not Bible. If it was of an importance, amen, in the scripture, don't you know God would have found some place for it? 
and you would not have tied it in with a heathen birthday. Yes, Lord. Easter. Where? That also was celebrated 2,000 years before Moses. And the very word Easter, as I shared before, is from this same queen of heaven whom the Babylonians called Ishtar. And the Bible calls her Ashtaroth. All right, so I'm showing you here, brothers and sisters, that you cannot worship God any other way than what the scriptures tell us to worship him. Now, I want you to turn to, uh, I believe that's 1 Timothy chapter 3. And let's connect some, again, some legal groundwork here. All right, let's, let's, let's try chapter 4. Verse 16. Take heed to thyself and to the doctrine. Continue in them. Now again, we have to continue in the instructions of God. If we don't continue in the instructions of God, then we don't have any foundation for the doctrine or any legality for uh, the doctrine. Uh, I'm trying to find. 2 Timothy, 3rd chapter. That's where I want to go. Verse 11. persecutions and afflictions which came unto me at Antioch and at Iconium at Lystra. What persecution I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Now here, uh, God is trying to show that if you take a stand to defend the Bible truth, you're going to be persecuted. You're going to be rejected by loved ones. You're going to be, the Bible says, you'll be hated above all nations for my name's sake. And his name's sake means his divine word. All right, in verse 12, Yea, all that will live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. They're deceiving multitudes. I tell you, uh, wait, you wait for a couple of weeks. You can hardly turn one of these gospel programs on and you ain't, you ain't going to hear something about Easter or rather Christmas. And you're going to see the decorate. Even some of these churches are going to have the evergreen tree. And God spoke against that tree. Hallelujah. Well, what are they doing? They are fulfilling Bible prophecy. In the latter time, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Here, it teaches in verse 12, Yea, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Now watch verse 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hath been assured of knowing whom thou hast learned them. It pays to know who's teaching you. You just can't go to any church and sit up under a teacher who's not qualified to teach you and say amen every time he says something in the name of Jesus that Jesus has no identification with through his word. So again, we have to really be on guard about these evil times that we're in. Now take note in verse uh, 1 from chapter 4. I charge thee before the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing. Preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. The time will come when a church folk don't want to hear the truth. They'll get upset because you're going to take away Johnny's Christmas. But the Bible says raise the child up in the way that it should go. And it should not depart when it's old. So I'm saying, church, all of these oppressions are going to come against any church people that is willing to stand up and defend the faith. And we today are one of the few that's left that's willing to stand up and defend all the Bible, not just part of the Bible. As I said before, you, you can't take part that you like and the part you don't like leave it alone you've got to take all of it and swallow it the same way and what don't taste good you got to keep it down hallelujah because all scripture is good for you if you mean to be right in the sight of God so we have to really be on God we have to be strong in the faith we have to be strong in our resolve and did not Jesus once say if your right eye offend you 
pluck it out. We shared with that a couple.